what I would strongly recommend is strategically deciding that your party will practice and promote gender equality. That's what we did in Nasha Stranka. Essentially, we decided that every party body we will practice 50% equality, 50-50% equality of both genders. That also applies for our lists for elections. Uh, and most importantly, I would say our dedication to investing absolutely equal amount of time, finances, media attention uh, in both male and female candidates. And that has proven to be more than successful for us. Currently, in the last elections, we had 62% of women elected. Um, and calculating how many votes uh, from the total number of votes that our party got, over 50% of our votes um, came for female candidates. That means investing in our people, investing in their personal, political, strategic development really pays off, both for the party, I would say, and the country in which we are working. We have something called Initiative 50%, where every year we select um, our female candidates and uh, not only candidates for election, but also simply members who go through a year-long training in terms of uh, media practices, a PR, uh, choosing, and, and of course, choosing policies that they will be the face of. Because at the end of the day, it's about the content and it's about what we are offering to the people. And each one of our candidates needs to know at any point uh, of the day, what are they standing for? What exactly are they fighting for? And what are their key expertise? Well, what we do is many times in politics, and I think in any other field, too often we think that the challenges that we are facing and the problems that we are facing obstacles are only obstacles uh, that we are facing in our country and so on. And then meeting other people and realizing that a lot of the experiences we think are unique for our environment are actually experiences that women across the world share. Uh, and it's also important to see that within the party, for women to network within the party and to realize that some of the, some of the doubts that they may have about their participation are usually the doubts that women around, uh, not only around the world, obviously, but also within the party share. So to have that expertise, to have, uh, to have us sitting in one place and, and be guided and, and be told and essentially by other women and understood that we are sharing similar experiences, I think is necessary and unique because women are overall globally still a minority in politics and in the positions of power. I think as a temporary measure, quotas are absolutely necessary because even within our party, if in the areas where we don't decide that we are adamantly for gender equality, we may slip up. We may forget that we need to make sure that the women and men that we delegate to, for example, committees and so on, there need to be equal number of women and men. Um, so it takes years. We are not there yet. I'm not saying despite our enormous successes that Nasha Stranka has achieved a perfect gender equality. Um, and even if we do achieve it within the party, we certainly haven't achieved it within the society. Um, so quotas is a necessary step in promoting equality until we no longer need them. And I'm certainly looking forward to the day when quotas are obsolete, they are behind us and they're no longer necessary. The, the policies that are traditionally perceived as female and women's policies, we also give them different angles. Um, and we actually enlighten our colleagues, both party colleagues and our colleagues from other parties in the legislative bodies, that those are not female issues. There are no female issues. If we are talking about maternity leave, if we are talking about family rights, why are this women's issues? But at the same time, issues that are traditionally perceived as male issues, like defense, there are plenty of issues associated to women, knowing that women tend to be the number one victims of the war. Um, and so in many, many instances, we, uh, we, we enlarge the, 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 the topics, we give them different angles, we change the discourse in politics and within the party. For our party, focus um, has, I would say, expanded to topics that were previously traditionally not seen as priority topics. For example, maternity leave, Bosnia and Herzegovina, or the particular part of Bosnia and Herzegovina, is the only place in Europe where maternity leave is not regulated, or the paid maternity leave is not regulated um, or guaranteed. So in many instances, we shed the light on topics that are traditionally not on the table, but we also present them as liberal issues, economic issues, economic empowerment issues, and not necessarily only social care issues. We always wonder um, what 
why am I in this and, and how can I get more women to the table? I need more women at the table. I need more women understanding what I am trying to do and what my colleagues, female colleagues, are trying to do. Uh, we need partners in this, obviously. Um, and I think the whole atmosphere utterly changes in the room where there is a gender equality. It, the, the representation itself of both men and women in the room enriches the debate. Uh, makes makes better laws, makes better states, and this is scientifically proven that participation of women in politics is directly correlated with a lack of corruption um, and, and simply broader, broader, broader issue base. Um, so in that regard, I think many women always wonder, am I good enough for this? I would tell them you're more than good enough for this. Um, and the rooms in which I sit are often full of men. And let me tell you, they're not the most impressive rooms <laughs> in the world. So we absolutely need you. Not necessarily, but I would like to emphasize one thing we need men in the struggle as well. Uh, to have highly educated, emancipated, ambitious women is not enough. We need understanding from both sides. Um, so oftentimes I'm asked how important is education for women and so on. And I always say as important as it is for men, uh, because we can no longer afford like we had in the past hundreds of years to invest in only one gender. We need equality and that means equality for men as well. <laughs>